coming out. He's coming home. All those prayers, all that work we did, we just in short notice. That's how I'm doing a lot of sway, a lot of work, man. I don't even know what to say. That's, it's, it's beyond. We've been working for years. <laughs> like. <laughs> What's the news, Russ? Oh, salute, salute, salute. No. Yep, yep. So, um, again, thank all of y'all. Um, I just want to say again that uh, it's been a long road, but um, the family, um, my dad, obviously, um, all of those over the years who have put a bunch of time and energy in and um, are... Uh, uh, again, you know, praying, loving, fighting the good fight. And uh, again, you know, that's what um, this all is centered around. It's been centered around humanity. It's still centered around humanity. And, you know, we have to keep pushing that. We have to keep growing that. We have to keep um, educating people around you know these struggles for humanity because that's what it is at the end of the day and it was a, a very kind of heart moving uh, uh uh hearing where my dad actually got to speak you know right, and so right. a lot of people um including myself um want to speak for my dad but get the transcript and you can hear it for yourself and it's not me it's not somebody else it's not his writings but, uh, it's him telling you what he feels about his actions, you know, what he feels ideologically right now, not what he felt 20 years ago, not what he felt two years ago, not what he felt two minutes ago, but what he felt right then when the judge was asking him, you know, or Brett was asking him, you know, what do you feel about your actions? What do you feel about your ideologies? So it's all in the transcripts, but more importantly, what's in the transcripts are the evidence that the prisons don't have the capabilities to take care of not just their healthy prisoners, they definitely don't have the ability to take care of their geriatric prisoners and that they have effectively killed my father. That's what's in the transcript that's more important is, is that they killed my father, the judge is shocked that there's a lack of care at that level and so if the judge is shocked that there's a lack of care at that level, there's a lawsuit here, not just for my father, but for prisoners in general that have historically had poor health. And it's no way that that system with uh, uh, millions of people can take care of them in any sustainable, healthy way. Um, so again, that is there for you to look at. That is where our struggle is because we still have a, a gang of aging and elderly prisoners that we have to bring home. So let's double down around what the judge stated, which was she can't believe that the prison can't afford health care. You know, so let's let's go back and look at those transcripts and legally, spiritually, medically double down for our aging prisoners. Thank y'all again. Give y'all a hand. Give yourself a hand. Give yourself a hand. Thank you so much. Um, Love y'all. I mean, the, the, it was a long, um, she, she took a lot of time and her to hear all of the arguments. And it started off with um, essentially um, the council, um, Brett Grody, communicating to um, the, like, summarizing what know, the petition was about. I would, I, I um, and then they to. heard from the family um, of the, band, the what's it, Van Collin, the Van ba Collin family, um, their desire that um, that he stay in the prison and that he die alone, essentially. I'm starting with the doctor who provides hospice care. Um, and, you know, she just explained what was needed for him and what she understood was happening and that she's been looking over the case since 2019 um, and that he's not receiving the care that he needs in order to be able to die with dignity, ultimately. Um, and, um, and then they testified that the Department of Corrections um, was not providing it. We went to the hospital. Um, there was certain um, there was certain medical like intravenous um, proceedings that were 
moving forward that, that he needed and that they had given him and when he went then he was returned back to the prison and they weren't giving that to him anymore um, and um, and so um, he was had it ultimately so, showed that he'd only received two days of nutrition and since like the 11th I think of October and um, and then they um, also had a, um, a psychiatrist who was able to talk about whether or not he had any um, propensity towards violence, whether or not he was psychopathic, um, and um, based on a number of tests, and he went over those tests, and then um, the judge reviewed that testimony, um, recognized that the Department of Corrections was not able or willing, was either unable or unwilling to provide the end of life care that um, that he needed. Um, she decided, she expressed that every person has the right to that, regardless of what they may have done at any given point in time prior. Um, whether it was 30 years ago or 10 weeks ago, she said that there's a certain end of life care that every um, person is entitled and that the Department of Corrections should be able to provide that. And if it's not, then she had no choice but to grant the petition. And so, you know, she considered all of the arguments um, to and from. The Commonwealth also was very, was very fair, I feel. And, as she said, and that they did not stand against it um, at all, and also raised some of the concerns that um, demonstrated the reason why it was um, an appropriate petition, and so she granted the petition. He is going to be going to um, hospice care. Um, he's going to first go to a hospital, um, be assessed for what his current nutritional needs are um, so that they can be provided. And then once that assessment is done, then he'll be moved to outpatient hospice care, um, where he will spend his final days. Say when we win, and uh, uh, it's more wins to long come. live revolution, and we got a whole lot more to bring out. What's great about this is that this is a people's movement, and it took the people to stay consistent and persistent. And uh, when that judge made the wrong decision before, people didn't go home and throw their hands up and say, oh, they won. Oh, hell no. And oh, they went back into the streets and they organized. They had every I dotted, every T crossed, left her only to do the right thing. And I'm saying, you know, she could have did the wrong thing like she did before, but it's that pressure of eyes that's on the prize. And, uh, and that's what we got to do with all the rest of our people. I'm saying, you know, there was something every week, you know, down there every day in order to bring attention to what's going on here. So while we got this tribunal going on in New York, I think it's the marching stuff today. And uh, but um, we got something else to throw our fists up in the air. And an example, an example. This is not just good for Russell and the family. This goes all the way across the board because the president has been set about dealing with the health issues inside the prisons. So what I say is long live revolution and stay working forward. One thing I was I want to just mention that was really important is that um, Maroon was able to speak for himself today. Oh, and I missed that. Yeah, he, he spoke for himself. He answered questions. He gave the long one of the longest testimonies that was um, given today. And I think that that also made a big difference for mm. it, It's really I important for people to bring be able out that door. Oh no! I was in there waiting for him to come out of there. Yeah, he's sick. He's he, he's sick. He can't, you know. But he he was um, able to speak for himself, and I think it's really important for people's spirits to be able to be present and for them to be able to speak for themselves. I think that was really an important um, part of the case. He was not able to do that the previous time, um, and so her being able to see him and see his spirit, I think, really also impacted her ability to make the right decision. She did demonstrate a. a, a she did demonstrate a compassion, um, and I, I think, in my opinion, she demonstrated compassion and, and wanted to make the right decision within the context of this, like, very um, unjust. It's like hard to make a just decision in an unjust system, but um, I think that um, her she she was demonstrating that, and I think that his 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 spirit being there really helped her and empowered her to be able to do that. And we should remember that it's very important for the actual um, person who we are advocating for to also be able to speak for themselves. And you know, that's what happened in Mumia's medical case as well. And uh, once Mumia was allowed to be present, 
and you know, um, the, the judge and all, you know, was judging on what it is that they see and what it is that they hear and people being in the courtroom, in the courtroom and outside. That's very important to push that when people are in situations like this and all, they provide, you know, um, the um, equipment so that they can be important so they can be just these themselves. I think it was uh, compassion on the judge's part. And I, I think she was embarrassed because, she, and she her, she raised her voice, and she was upset at the idea that she was surprised that the Pennsylvania Department of Corrections couldn't or wouldn't provide adequate medical care. You know, it's kind of like if, if you make a recommendation to somebody and then that person goes and embarrasses you, now you're upset. And she was upset because she, she, like you said, she made a wrong ruling last time. You, you should have had compassion before because he isn't in significantly better physical shape. But, as a matter of fact, he's, in fact, I, I would assume he's better today than he was last time because last time he couldn't testify because he was too sick. Right. He couldn't even come to the phone. You know, they didn't need to bring him down here to doing everything on Zoom. He was too sick to even come on Zoom or come on the phone. Then, the only difference now is that Oh, she found out that they didn't, you know, she ruled against him because, well, he can get his health care in prison. He can die in prison. He'd be all right. But then she realizes they couldn't even give him an IV. So now it's like, I'm perturbed also because they should have been able to do such and such. So and so she was, she was embarrassed that it came out that she ruled wrong. And for the past two weeks, he hasn't gotten any nutrition. That's what they said. He hasn't gotten any nutrition since October 11th. It's only been hydrational IVs. And so he's just been starving to death for the past two weeks. So, I mean, I'm glad she got it right today. And, you know, a lot knows best. Maybe there was some compassion stuffed away in there somewhere. But in my opinion, if you had compassion, he would have got out before instead of used suggesting that oh he's an undue risk of flight to the community at 80 years old in the condition that he in like, i mean how, how far are you going to get you can't even eat you can't even put food down your mouth where, where, where are you supposed to go so um you know so I, i'm glad they got it right was she the same judge that ruled before yeah, yes yeah. oh so she kind of changed switched up yes yeah, the same she judge. changed her they mind. put it back in the same judge's court Okay. Yes, with new evidence. Okay. Okay. Mm. Yeah. And, and again, I mean, that goes to show what all, like, like the circumstances, and, and and what they need to be in order for them to do the right thing. I mean, they had this forensic psychologist on there, and I'm just hearing them say, "Well, I went through all of these records. Like, how how much did it cost?" To get an expert in all of the hours and time it takes to read all those things, to go do an interview, that's thousands and thousands of dollars. To state the obvious, thousands and thousands of dollars to show that he's a low to no risk. Obviously, he's a low to no risk. He's an old man. He's sick. All of the stuff that you're afraid to happen happened 30 years ago. So, um, it's it's. Uh, as happy as we are that he's out, um, and, and hopefully this can be used as precedence, as an example for others. But I mean, I think it's also an example of how uh, unnecessarily and inhumanely difficult it is to get them to, to do the right thing. It shouldn't have taken all of this to get what we got today, but it did. You know, but and, and you know, fortunately, we got it but it shouldn't have been this hard. I just want to say this is a small victory and um, it just lets you know if you was in that courtroom, there's no way you could humanly possible not feel all the injustice that Baba Maroon has been going through. And it just let us know just, just to fight a little. If we fight a little, we can achieve a lot. So we're gonna keep fighting for all the political prisoners. We're not gonna stop until we free them all. Until we free them all. Free them all. We just came out of the courtroom. Um, 
my father uh, got released into hospice. You know, we are happy about that. Um, it is a victory. Um, as hard as it is for me to uh, sometimes celebrate the victories, we need to celebrate this victory um, before I say that we need to double down and, you know, bring the rest of these aging and elderly prisoners home and the prisoners who are sick and just dying on the floor. You know, what's in the transcript from, you know, my dad's hearing today is just horrific. You know, it's just horrific that anybody should have to die in prison with no nutrition, no nothing. If we didn't have this emergency hearing, then, you know, they were explaining that, yeah, like he just laying over there on the bed or whatever, and we just kind of waiting for him to die, you know? And so I'm glad that we did um, get the emergency hearing. I'm glad that the judge saw that uh, there is no medical care in prison. If you didn't know yet, when you get in prison, you ain't getting no meds. You know, you might get a pill, you might get a Tylenol, you might get a sugar pill, you might get whatever. But at the end of the day, there's not a real medical system in prison. And a lot of people go to prison um, for different reasons. Some people go um, unjustly convicted. Some people are innocent. And you go there and you get this horrible medical and you end up dying, you know, you go to prison for one day, you could die. You know, um, not just from physical harm or violence from somebody else, but from poor medical treatment. You know, it's a whole bunch of Hep C and um, Mia had it. Um, there's a ton of uh, elderly and geriatric problems. Um, there's a ton of uh, floating diseases that, you know, float through those type of situations because um, there's not enough sanitation, you know, in these big warehouses where it's just a bunch of people. Not enough um, equipment, not enough cleaning material, not enough um, COVID safety requirement. You know, another thing is, is that the prison, the prison guards, they refusing to, you know, they refusing to take the shot. So how are you going to keep anything cyclical, cyclical clean or healthy? How are you going to build any herd immunity within that prison and prison guard community, you know? And so again, just know that part of the work that we have to do is in coming back and saying that this is not just a victory for Maroon. We need to have a conversation with the state and the DOC specifically about medical for everybody across the board. It's not sustainable in the context of, you got millions of people in jail, a lot of them are mentally ill, you know. What does that look like for people? If you think it was bad for my dad, if you mentally ill in prison, you know, you could get beat to death, you know. So, again, this is a victory. We're happy. Um, we love the fact that folks have supported, come out. We love, you know, the fact that um, the community, the love, the spirituality was there, you know. So, again, thank you, everybody. You know, thank 856 and Sunny um, for doing this amazing, amazing community driven content. Get on to that. Get on to this community driving content. Get on to Sunny's idea of media. Get on to creating something for yourself that's different that we can use and be there. Come alive, you know, do it. Um, and again, thank everybody for this lifetime journey of trying to liberate Maroon. His liberation is complete, but the fight is not over. Um, the fight is definitely not over in the context of many other people are dying in jail as we speak. You know, we were fighting for humanity in the beginning of this struggle, you know, against police brutality. We're still fighting police brutality and we're fighting for humanity. You know, thank you again. Thank you so much. Last question, what's the first thing you want to say or do when you see your dad? Um, I just want to say I love you. Um, I just want to hug him. Um, I just really want him to uh, have that freedom that I see a lot of other people have when they come home out of jail, just to make mad, wild decisions. Like, oh, I can do this, I can do that. Oh, no, I don't want to hug, actually. Oh, I don't like the words I love you. Uh, Salam alaikum is better than me. Whatever wild things that you want now, 
you can request them, you know, not like with a guard being like, nah, you got to say, say salam alaikum or let them hug you or whatever it may be, because that's the situation you in, you know, until you get home, then you get home and it's like, what you want to go? What you want to go to the Marriott? What you want to go back down to CJC and just spit on the building and pee on it? Or, well, you know, what do you want to do? You want to go just mix a lot? You know, you want to go to Juma? What you want to do, bro? You know, that is that is what I want to do. I want to say, what you want to do, bro? You know, and yes, he's tied down. He's sick. He can't go to the, uh, he can't do this. He can't do that. But I want to say it to him. You know, I want to say it like, what you want to do? You know, we can't, he ain't eating, so we can't order him no food, you know, whatever. But, you know, those type of things, you know, I want him to have some decisions outside of, yeah, you got an ankle bracelet on. Yeah, you can't do this, you can't do that. But some really base decisions, like you want to go upstairs or you want to be on the couch, you know, you want to watch this or you want to watch that, you know, basic stuff that we probably take for granted. That's really what I want to do. I want to see him just get some basics, you know. That brings a smile to my face to know that he'll get some basics. Not nothing extravagant, not nothing, but some basics. You want to do this? You want a cup of tea? I know you like coffee, whatever. Just some basics, you know. So, but yeah, that's what I want.